This is no one from nowhere, and you are, and I am, a spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about Anunnaki Lord Marduk, Bell and the Dragon. First a joke. What kind of music did the pilgrims listen to? Plymouth Rock, baby. <laughs> Do you know who the Anunnaki God Marduk is? Have you ever heard of the snake dragon? Have you heard of Bell and the dragon listed in the extended book of Daniel? Today's video, you will learn, seek, and find this information. Marduk, the god Marduk, was the patronal god of the city of Babylon from at least as early as the third dynasty of Ur. His worship is attested as early as the early diagnostic period, although nothing further is known of his origin. The conventional writing of his name with the signs meaning literally bull calf of the sun is probably a popular etymology. Later on, Marduk was often known simply as Bell or Lord. Quite early on, Marduk seems to have absorbed the personality of a local deity of the Aridu region, Asarluli, and he was regarded as the son of Inki. Consequently, Marduk became the son of Inki Ia. Marduk's great shine, shrine was a temple called Asegal at Babylon, where he was worshipped together with his wife, Serapinet. Occasionally, the goddess Nanya was treated as his wife, and Nabu worshipped at nearby Borsippa became in due course the son of Marduk. The rise of the cult of Marduk is closely connected with the political rise of Babylon from city-state to the capital of an empire. From the Kassite period, Marduk became more and more important until it was possible for the author of the Babylonian Epic of Creation, the Unama Elish, to maintain that not only was Marduk king of all the gods, but that many of the latter were no more than aspects of his persona. Hence, the hymn of the 50 names of Marduk incorporated into the epic, to which a contemporary list of gods adds 66 more. Marduk was also a popular god in Assyria from about the 14th century B.C., because of his supreme position, it is difficult to identify specific traits in his character, but magic and wisdom derived from his connection with Ea, Inki, and water and vegetation connections with his father Ea, and judgment with the sun god Utu Shemesh. The worship of Marduk in its most extreme form has been compared with monotheism, but it never led to a denial of the existence of other gods or to the exclusion of female deities. In the Epic of Era, when the god Era wants to unseat Marduk so that temporarily he, Era, can rule the world, Marduk is presented possibly with humorous intent, in a very uncharacteristic form as a bumbling old incompetent whose insignia needs repairing and cleaning. Marduk's symbol of a triangular head, spade, or hoe, the Mera, made possible reflect the origin of the god to a local agricultural deity. The snake dragon as an animal of Marduk and Nabu was taken over from Tispak, local god of Asima, possibly soon after the conquest of the city by Hammurabi of Babylon. The snake dragon pictured here with horns, snake's body and neck, lion's four legs, and bird's hind legs is represented from the Akkadian period down to the Hellenistic period as a symbol of various gods or as a generally magically protective hybrid 
not associated specifically with any deity. The Masamu was originally an attendant of Ninasu, the god of Ninasu, and it was inherited by the god Tispak when he replaced Ninasu, a city god in the Akkadian or early Old Babylonian period. Ninasu's son, Ningazida, possibly after Hammurabi's conquest of Inasama, the creature was transferred to the new Babylonian national god Marduk, and later on to his son Nabu. The conquest of Babylon by the Assyrian king Sinasabab reigned 704 to 681 BC brought the motif to Assyria normally as the beast of the state god Ashur. Also, this was accompanied by other Anunnaki gods, Assur, Enlil, and also Nabu. The narrative of Bell and the Dragon is incorporated as chapter 14 of the extended book of Daniel. The original Sertuanit text in Greek survived in a single manuscript. And this also sounds like Marduk's wife, Serpinet. This chapter, along with chapter 13, is considered deuterocanical, and it was rejected by Judaism, and while it was viewed as canonical by both Catholic and Orthodox Christians, it's considered by most Pro Protestants and typically not found in modern Bibles. And this is exactly why I'm going to read it to you. The work does date to the Persian period. And the summaries contain a single story which may previously have represented three separate narratives, which placed Daniel at the court of Cyrus, king of the Persians. Quote, When King Astages was laid to rest with his ancestors, Cyrus the Persian succeeded to his kingdom. There Daniel, a companion of the king, and was the most honored of all his friends. This is found in chapter 14.1. Lord Bel Marduk. The narrative of Bel in Daniel 14.1-22 ridicules the worship of idols. The king asked Daniel, You do not think Bel is a living god? Do you not see how much he eats and drinks every day? To which Daniel answers that the idol is made of clay, covered by bronze, and thus cannot eat or drink. Enraged, the king then demands that the seventy priests of Bel Marduk show him who consumes the offerings made to the idol. The priests then challenge the king to set the offerings as usual, which were twelve great measures of fine flour and forty sheep and six vessels of wine, and then seal the entrance to the temple with his ring. If Belmarduk does not consume the offerings, the priests are to be sentenced to death. Otherwise, Daniel is to be killed. Daniel then uncovers the ruse by scattering ashes over the floor of the temple in the presence of the king after the priest have left. And this shows that the sacred meal of Bel Marduk is actually consumed at night by the priest and their wives and children, who enters through a secret door when the temple doors are sealed. The next morning, Daniel calls attention to the footprints on the temple floor. The priest of Bel Marduk are then arrested and confessing their deed, reveal the secret passage and they use, that they use to sneak inside the temple. Then their wives and children are put to death, and Daniel is permitted to destroy the, Bel, the idol of Bel, Marduk, and the temple. This version has been cited as an ancestor of the locked room mystery. The dragon narrative in Daniel 14, 23-30, quote, There was a great dragon which the Babylonians revered. In this case, the supposed god is no idol, but an animal. However, Daniel slays the dragon by baking pitch, fat, and hair, 
to make cakes that cause the dragon to burst open upon consumption. In other variants, other ingredients serve the purpose. Earlier scholarship has suggested a parallel between this text and the context between Marduk and Tiamat in Mesopotamian mythology, where the winds controlled by Marduk burst Tiamat open, and barley cakes play the same role as the wind, because all roads lead to the Anunnaki gods. Also, as a result, the Babylonians are angry and threaten the king if he does not give them Daniel. Daniel is handed over and thrown into the lion's den. The prophet Habakkuk is miraculously recruited and brought to share a meal where Daniel is in the den. When Daniel is found alive in the den seven days later, the king throws his persecutors to the lions who eat and kill him. The lion's den is the third narrative found in the extended book of Daniel in 14, 31 through 42. Daniel in the lion's den may be a retelling of the incident in Daniel 6, 1 through 28 and may describe a separate incident. However, Daniel said this after Bel Marduk saved him from the lions in the den found in Daniel 6, 25 through 27. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is a living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He had resolved Daniel from the power of the lions. Marduk was born in Nibiru and married an earthling named Serpinet at Belbek, Lebanon, wherein the Ajiji gods came in from Mars to also marry and take by force women to marry, furiating Enlil as in the book of Genesis 6-4, and to the book of Enoch, called the Watchers or the Fallen Angels. What do you get when you cross a lion and a snowman? Frostbite, baby. <laughs> Only because you are, and I am, a spirit of the Most High Gods. Peace and love to you. Thank you so much.